Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y from Miriam's Nature. I recently used glitter to make ornaments and remembered how much I love the look of it at times. So I want to do a little test with it alongside some metallic-like mica powders in resin this time. If it works out, I'll expand the look for future projects. So let's give this a shot. To color the resin, I'm going to use this loose glitter. It's a Martha Stewart color. Um, this, this particular one is amethyst. Some mica powder by Ranger called Perfect Pearls. You can also use the brand Pearl X or really any mica powder that you have will do just fine. I'm also going to use some black pigment powder. That's just to color some of my resin black, but you can really use anything to color your resin black. Um, and I'm going to be using my go-to resin for this, which is ClearCast 7050, because it sets faster and harder than most all resins that we buy. But still, it gives me a 45-minute work time first. And given that I'm probably going to want to do more than one layer of resin, 7050's clarity is such a bonus. Ooh. And because it's sold directly by the manufacturer, the pricing is really good, too. Now, I get asked about resin a lot, so I'll make sure to share tips and tricks in every resin video that I do. Resin and I have been friends for about six years now, and honestly, I think you can buddy up to it, too. I know some of you are afraid of it, but it's really not that scary. Now, since this is a test, I'm just going to use a 5 by 7 inch canvas panel. And what I do first is separate out my colors. And I put a little bit of each of the colors that I'm going to use, these are the mica powders, into a little Ziploc bag. And these are 1 by 2 inch Ziploc bags. They're like this size. But um, this one here is one and a half by one and a half, they also come in two by two inch, three by three, two by three, you know, whatever size you need. And I'm gonna show you why I use these. But first I'm gonna glove up and mix up some resin. This particular epoxy mixes two to one, meaning two parts of the resin to one part hardener. Now I do all my mixing in one cup instead of measuring the amount of resin I need in a first cup and the amount of hardener in a second cup and then pouring all of the, you know, everything into yet a third cup. Ugh, <laughs> I used to do it that way. Don't do that. Use the final cup you would have used for everything. What I do is determine how much hardener I need for my project. In this case, I'm going to do 20 milliliters of hardener. And then, therefore, I need 40 milliliters of resin, so that would bring me to 60, and I mark off 60. So then I pour my hardener up to this line and stop, and then pour my resin up to that line and stop. And everything is all in one cup, ready to mix, and it's neat. <laughs> I don't have other cups to deal with, and I know that it's going to mix well. Now, the other thing is whatever cup you're going to use for your mixing, try to get as round a bottom as you can. Like these little guys, I mean, I still use these sometimes when I need a small amount, but because they've got these little notches at the bottom, you never get really every last speck perfectly mi mixed in because you get caught up on those little notches. But this has a really smooth bottom, and I can really scrape every side really well and get it all mixed in. My resin is all mixed, and now I'm ready to add color to it. Now, if you remember, I had poured some mica into these little baby Ziploc bags, and my glitter is in one of those bags too. And I'm gonna show you why I do this. Now, if you were going to mix different colors, you probably would use a different cup for each of them. And then you need a different stick for each of those cups. And then when you go to pour everything, sometimes you don't pour the amount you want or it doesn't come out in the nice thin stream that you want. So 
this is the solution. And what I do is I pour in the amount of mica, in this case, that I need. And now I'm just going to sort of open it up and pour in some resin. And then I'm going to seal the bag and then just mush this around until I feel, and I really hold on to the seal because you don't want that to pop open. And, and then I'm going to really get this all nice and mixed up. And when I'm ready to use it, I'm just gonna cut a little end off and use this almost like a cake decorating bag. And depending on how much I cut off on the end, I can determine how big of a stream I get. And then by really mushing this around, I also don't have to worry about any little clumps because I can first of all see them and really get them nicely worked into the resin. And then finally my glitter. And I've also added a little mica to this bag just in case the glitter doesn't give me enough color. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, there's something oddly satisfying <laughs> about mushing this all around. It's kind of fun. At first I was thinking of doing my black in a cup, but I decided to do the black in a bag too, just for fun. And it's so quick this way, and like I said, all your clumps get nicely worked in, and you can, you know, sort of spread it around to see if you have any clumps. It's awesome. And fun. <laughs> my colors are mixed, and now I have to come up with some sort of design plan. This is really more of a test than anything, so I really didn't have a plan, but I might as well try to make something pretty. I'm going to start out with some clear to give this resin something to move on. Just like when we're doing acrylic pouring and we pour white first to let everything move on. I'm gonna do the same thing with a little bit of clear here. And just because it's fun, I'm gonna spread it around with my finger in this case. My layer of clear is down and I'm gonna start out with the glitter and all I'm going to do is cut a little corner off of the bag and then just see how this pours out oh, I have absolutely no plan <laughs> so we're just going to see what happens. I'll be tilting this at some point. I also want to be able to see how the mica interacts with the glitter. Does the glitter stay above um, or does it sink below the mica? I have no idea. So now I'm opening the blue. And... I'm going to put some alongside some of the purple. And I think in some spots I'm going to put it right on top to see what happens. And then when I'm not using a bag, I can just lay it down. It won't ooze out unless you're squeezing it. Nothing is going to come out of it. So I'm going to move this around to stretch these out a little bit. Let's try a little green. I don't want a lot of black to come out, just little dots here and there. Some of the mica has definitely fallen to the bottom, but some of it is floating on top. And then when I tilt, it slides, it glides over the layer that has fallen to the bottom. It's really a cool effect. I'm going to blow this around a little bit and see what happens. I'm not loving the black, so I'm going to fill that back in, I think, with color. Now I'm going to play with a little bit of the it's more of a yellow than gold. It's very vibrant. I'm going to try a little bit of a puddle over here. Let's 
see what that would be like. Oh, I like that. Now I'm going to try a heat tool and or a heat gun. And if you're not familiar with these, they blow much less air than a hair blow dryer does, but the air that does come out is extremely hot. So what this is going to do is dramatically heat the resin, so it'll cause it to be temporarily less viscous and it'll flow easier. And I'm also going to see if I can push some of this around just to see what happens. Again, this is all a test just to get a feel for how mica behaves next to glitter and next to itself and all that kind of stuff. And you see how much faster it can move. Oh, I like this. I like this motion quite a bit. What's really neat about the mica, too, is it doesn't make mud. Like, even colors that you wouldn't think would blend nicely, like purple and yellow. It's just, they stay really rather separated and pretty. Oh, this is fun stuff to play with. I'm going to stop and think. It's not like a painting with, a, with acrylic paint. I don't have a lot of time to think. I've got some work time, but not as much as I would with paint. So thinking has to happen really <clears throat> more efficiently. So I love what's happening here. I like this. I'm not crazy about down here. So I'm going to sort of cover that up with a few more puddle-like structures. <clears throat> Some blue, maybe a little bit here. Metallic quality is just so phenomenal. Okay, so now I need to blow these because they're not as wispy and ethereal as everything else. So I kind of would like them to be. Let's see what it's like to drag. This is the kind of thing I'm so used to doing with acrylic paint. It's fun to do it with resin. So, down on this edge, I'm still not crazy about how the glitter ended up. It was when I tilted this way, and some of the glitter sort of came rushing to this edge, and I'm still not fond of that patch, so I'm going to use black there to sort of block it. It'll completely obscure it, because the black is pretty opaque. And then now, in other areas where I don't need to obscure, I can just use some of my leftover clear to fill in gaps that are there. And I don't even need to be that neat about it, because what's wonderful about resin is it's self-leveling, so if I put a whole big blob there, like a minute later, it'll be completely flat, like a sheet of glass. Even when it's sort of almost curing, it's still able to do that, which is very nice of it. So I'm just pouring it along the edge so that it drips over the side. I'm taking this pretty seriously for a test. <laughs> like this was just to see color, but now I want to make it all <laughs> like worthy of hanging or something. I don't know what I would do with this, but I just want to make sure the edges are nice and loaded. 
And so now the resin is starting to cure a little bit because if you can see, let me zoom in. When I pull up on the stick, I sort of get sort of tail. You can see that, but it'll correct itself. But this is really letting me know that I'm really running out of time. So whatever I gotta do, I better finish up. So it has been exactly an hour since I finished mixing the resin. So I've had an hour's worth of work time. Now every resin isn't the same. And depending on your climate, that'll influence things too. So for those of you that are thinking, oh no, resin, I only have 15 minutes. I'm never gonna get it done. You have more time, depending on the resin you use. There are certainly some that set up really quickly, but this one gives me plenty of time. I am now running my little stick along the edge just to knock off any drips that have formed. I'm going to run a torch over it really quickly. It's just to pop any bubbles that might be. Present. Okay. All right, now she's done. I am loving the possibilities of mica colors. They layer beautifully without creating mud when the colors mix. So that makes the thought of trying out daring color combinations pretty exciting. There are links for supplies in the description box below the video, including the silicone mixing cup that I used. The spout makes it really easy to fill the little Ziploc bags, and being silicone, nothing sticks to that thing. So it is endlessly reusable. Just let any little bits of leftover resin cure in the cup, and then they lift out with little effort. It also works great for acrylic paint if you're an acrylic pourer too. Okay. Let me know with a thumbs up if you enjoyed this and definitely tell me what questions you have about resin. What's gotten in your way of trying it? Or maybe tell me how much you already love working with it too. I'm excited to read your thoughts and ideas. Thank you to all of you that are using my Amazon links as your portal to Amazon. It is helping me buy supplies to make more videos for you and I so appreciate that. Sharing this is also a big help, so thank you in advance for helping with that, too. Please share and subscribe. My crazy head is bursting with ideas of things to show you, and I think you're going to get a kick out of lots of them. Okay, go paint something now. You know you want to. Thanks for watching. Bye now.